the hardest part of my recovery over the first few weeks was a lack of concentration and a constant feeling of not being myself, which had a really negative effect on my self-confidence. I felt completely dependent on Gerhard and that I would never rediscover my own identity. I wouldn't leave the house without him and driving was out of, of the question. I felt far too unsure of myself and I thought it was more sensible to wait for my concentration span to return to normal. We saw Dr. Said again soon for a follow-up visit. I was glad to see him again. I needed reassurance and encouragement. He could sense this, and so he took the time to tell me about well-known people who were living with bipolar disorder and coping with it very well. He strongly believed that I was going to get better and that my condition wouldn't stop me from living a normal life. Nevertheless, he warned us about the possibility of an up upcoming period of depression. He explained that this was a common event in the months following an episode of mania. He informed us of the symptoms to watch out for, but also told us it was possible that I might not experience one at all. He reassured us that he would be continuing his follow-up visits. Next was our final visit to the midwifery clinic. It was Marzi who saw us. I felt a little sad at the idea of not seeing my team of midwives anymore. They had looked after us so well. Without them, and especially without Holly, I would never have got the psychological help which I so badly needed. Before we left, we took a photo with Marzi and gave her a thank you card. Since we wanted to make sure we saw Holly once more, we took down her details to visit her at the other clinic where she worked. When we saw her, we thanked her with a card too. This made her really happy, and she took the time to tell us that we had been her best patients. She had really valued our relationship with us. We felt likewise, and it was with a heavy heart that we said our goodbyes. We saw the social worker once again around the same time. I shared my fears with her about the uncertainness of my future. What if my diagnosis stayed with me until the end of my days? She listened to me sympathetically and then made me see that I had the support I needed in my life in Gerhard and Dr. Said. I could trust them. She told me she had tried to find a postpartum support group for me but that her searches had not been successful. The ones she knew were mainly for women who were experiencing postpartum depression. Since my situation had been rather different, she didn't think I would find the support I was looking for and that I will not be able to identify properly with their situations. Nevertheless, she told me she would keep searching and that she would let us know if she found a group suitable for me. We did not hear anything from her after this meeting. I assumed that her search was not successful since I myself looked online for a support group and the only one I could find was for people with bipolar disorder and the meetings took place rather far from us. It seems like there was nothing for moms like me. Although I knew that my diagnosis was not a common one, I still hoped to find other moms who had experienced the same thing. I felt I was an exception, an impression which stayed with me for a long time. One afternoon when Gerhard wanted to go to the gym, I went with him so as not to stay by myself with Elliot in our apartment. Since the gym was in the big shopping center, Gerhard suggested that I go for a walk around during his workout. Although I was feeling better that day, I was not overly keen on the idea because I was still a little nervous about being alone with Elliot. But I said yes and told myself that it would only be for an hour and that I could always find Gerhard if necessary. So I left him and went off for a walk with Elliot, who was asleep in his stroller. I took the chance to go to the pharmacy and buy a few things we needed. While I was queuing up to pay at the checkout, Elliot woke up 
and started crying at the top of his lungs. I must say that Elias crying was particularly piercing compared to other babies. I couldn't calm him down and panic seized me. I felt as if everyone, everyone was watching me. When it was my turn to pay, I stammered to the cashier to ask if I could put my shopping to one side and come back later to pay. She said yes, and I hurriedly put everything down on the counter and dashed out of the pharmacy. I was panic-stricken. I knew that Elliot was hungry, but I couldn't see anywhere to breastfeed him without going all the way to the gym, which was at the other hand at the other end of the shopping center. Then I had the idea of going to the team maternity store, which was right nearby. The sales assistant would surely recognize me. She did, and she kindly suggested, suggested I use one of the fitting rooms to feed Elliot. I was really grateful to her. As soon as Elliot started feeding and stopped crying, I was able to regain my composure. But I hated the wave of panic which had taken hold of me. I felt completely at the mercy of my fears, which must surely be abnormally intense. Once again, I was powerless against the tricks which my brain was playing on me, and I could only hope for it to come an end, to an end before too long. When Elliot had finished his feed, I spoke a little with the sales assistant and thanked her for her kindness. Since Elliot had calmed down and my panic has dissipated, I felt ready to go back to the pharmacy and pay for the products which I had left at the checkout. Then I joined Gerhard at the exit of the gym, relieved to be in his company again. Because of this bad experience, and because we knew that regular exercise was good for my mental health, we decided to get me signed up at the same gym as Gerhard so that I could do some exercise while he did. And so we went there together. I was feeling particularly vulnerable that day, and my con concentration levels were at a minimum. I felt as if my mental illness was the first thing people could see when they looked at me. I felt unsure of myself and let Gerhard do the talking for me. While we waited for someone to come and sign me up, we ran into a friend who we had told about our situation, but who we hadn't seen since I came out of hospital. He gave us a hug and tears ran right down my cheeks. I noticed how sympathetic he was being towards me. Gerhard gave him more details about my situation and he listened attentively. He spoke encouraging words to us, which did me a lot of good. After this conversation, one of the instructors made himself available for me. He asked me to follow him to his office to sort out the gym membership. Gerhard noticed my nervousness and gave a brief, brief explanation of my condition, mentioning, among other things, that my concentration span was reduced. The instructor understood and was very kind towards me. Gerhard left me and a sleeping Elliot to go and start his workout. I had some difficulty understanding the instructor's questions in English, and so I had to ask him to repeat himself more than once. He was very patient with me. Then he showed me the sections which I had to complete by myself on the form and left the office while I filled them in. I felt ill at ease, left by myself to this task, which should have been easily one of the most straightforward for anyone who knows how to read. What could be easier than filling in my personal details and replying to questions about my physical condition? And yet, this was a really major task for my brain to handle. I felt as if I were being transported into another dimension where the words were making fun of me and dancing in front of my eyes without my being able to grasp them or ascribe any meaning to them in any reasonable time. I read the questions again and again and I quickly realized that my memory was failing me. A task as simple as writing down my address and phone number was a challenge. My heart was beating wildly and my fingers were trembling as they searched for my ID cards. Thankfully, 
The cards helped me fill everything in. When the instructor returned, he checked the form and, seeing that it was complete, asked Gerhard to join us to sort out the payment for my membership. Once this was finished, I was able to start my workout with Gerhard. The exercise did me good, and it was pretty easy to train at the same time as Gerhard because we would take the chance to do it while Elliot was asleep. If he woke up, I would go and sit in the changing room to breastfeed him and then carry on with my workout while Gerhard looked after him. Since I had already been training for several years, I felt at ease exploring the gym and using the machines as I pleased. This was one less stress to deal with. At the end of October, about two weeks after my family had left, we decided to take a trip to Quebec to visit my family and friends. I felt that I needed to surround myself with my loved ones. During the car journey, while Elliot was asleep, I kept myself occupied by writing a speech which I was planning to give in the next few weeks to my Toastmasters club, a club which helps you develop your skills in public speaking. We had gone there each week during my pregnancy and once again after Elliot's birth to show him to the group. We had not gone back since my time in hospital, but I really wanted to share my recent story with everyone. I felt inspired and wrote the speech without too many difficulties. I could see things clearly and felt really motivated by the project. This was perhaps a trace of mania, which was still affecting me. But I also felt a sense of purpose in informing those close to me and raising awareness among them about my postpartum mood disorder. Gerhard noticed my enthusiasm, enthusiasm, but checked to make sure it didn't get out of control. The visit to my parents' house really helped me. It gave me a chance to relax and to let them take care of me and Elliot. I also valued the visits to my friends' houses and they were sympathetic towards me. They treated me with great respect and I was reassured that my mental illness did not cause any unease between us. Although I still didn't feel entirely myself, it did me good to be having a normal relationship with them. Not long after we got back from Quebec, Gerhard's sister came to visit us for a week. She wanted to come and offer some support to make my recovery easier. Her help was much appreciated. She cooked the meals, did the cleaning, and looked after Elliot when necessary to allow me to rest as much as possible. One evening, she even offered to look after him so that we could go to the gym. I made sure I fed him before we left. I knew that we would have to be back within two hours with his, his next feed. I felt a little nervous about going off without him. It felt so strange living with just Gerhard. But I trusted my sister-in-law and the time we had alone without him was good for us. I had stayed in touch with my friend who had come to visit me at the hospital with her husband. She had just joined a group of moms, Mommy and Me, which met in the gym attached to a local church. She invited me to go with her. It would take my mind off things and allow me to meet some new people. I was very glad to say yes. Since I had finally started driving again, we arranged a time and place to get together for the group's next meeting. It was a lovely experience for me. The young woman leading the group was absolutely charming. There were free snacks available for us, as well as a wide variety of toys for babies and older children. I introduced myself and felt really welcome by each mother with whom I had a conversation. Some of them also invited me to join another group of moms which got together on a regular basis in the houses of its members. It was a matter of signing up online on the meetup site, which I did without hesitation. Several moms from Mommy and Me were also part of the other group, which meant I felt quickly at ease with them. We talked lots about our babies and our experiences of being a mother in general our joys as well as our challenges. A feeling of community grew between us, 
even though we had only known each other for a short period of time. I felt quickly at ease, sharing my recent ordeal, and their reactions were full of sympathy and, and curiosity. There was no judgment against me. I felt emotionally at ease with my new friends, and these meetings were certainly a positive part of my recovery. I did not miss a single meeting, and the time we spent together always passed too quickly for my liking. A month and a half after leaving hospital, I delivered my speech to our Toastmasters club. I had given myself about a month to write and perfect it. I had included a range of things, my diagnosis, some of what I had written while I was in hospital, information about the symptoms of bipolar disorder, how I was facing up to my new reality, and my belief in the importance of speaking openly about it to get support and create a community of mutual assistance. I finished it all on a hopeful note. Gerhard was in the audience with Iliad. I deliver my speech with great conviction and sincerity. It deeply moved my listeners, who gave me a standing ovation when it came to an end. The man who spoke to everyone afterwards to give his evaluation of my performance said that my speech was the best one he had heard in its category. At the end of the session, several members came over to congratulate me and tell me that I was brave to be as open as I was. A woman who was older than me confided to me that she had also received a diagnosis of bipolar disorder several years beforehand and that she was living a good life despite it. I really felt that there was hope for my future.